Hi, in this episode of Prophecy 101, we're talking about apostles, prophets, and evangelists and giving examples from history. In Ephesians chapter 4, Scripture tells us that Jesus gifts his people with apostles, prophets, and evangelists in addition to pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of our Messiah may be built up. Perhaps it is the widespread absence of apostles, prophets, and evangelists that contributes to the common stunting of maturity and fruitfulness as many believers are tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. There is a Redeemer Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Pure has much to say on each ministry and their equipping and their duties. God willing, I hope to provide a biblical description of each in future videos. Here, I begin the discussion with an illustration from church history in the Great Awakening. Apostles don't always set out intent on founding churches, but if existing institutions prove insufficient for the tasks outlined in Ephesians chapter 4, God will raise up apostles as gifts to wash the feet of his people. Apostles don't usually feel constrained by existing traditions and institutions. Their task is birthing and equipping believers. When regeneration of souls is occurring and existing institutions are inadequate for their care, God births new institutions and rebirths existing institutions through his gift of apostles. John Wesley was a main apostle in the first great awakening and the main apostle in the founding of the Methodist Church. John Wesley's brother Charles Wesley was a prominent worship prophet of that era. Charles wrote thousands of anointed and inspired contemporary hymns as needed to communicate God's love and holiness both inside and outside of churches. Jonathan Edwards was a prominent evangelical prophet in the First Great Awakening. He propounded an uncompromising message of repentance and regeneration, opening the eyes to many church audiences that they were not yet born again in most cases, and in some cases not acting like they're born again. George Whitfield was perhaps the most notable evangelist of the time. Not content with preaching to the churched, he felt compelled to reach the unchurched and brought open-air preaching and street evangelism back into vogue. Whitfield wanted his audience to, to experience deep conviction and mourning over their sin, to cry out to Jesus for the miracle of the new birth, and to gain assurance of regeneration by comparing the fruit of their lives with the good fruit described in Scripture. If we can improve at recognizing and equipping all of our Messiah's gifts to His church, we'll be closer to the kind of revival and awakening we need today. Forcing almost everyone called to ministry into the roles of pastors and teachers can quench the Holy Spirit's fire. Could it be that we have so few apostles and prophets and evangelists today because we're not asking? Didn't Jesus tell us to ask God to send workers into his harvest field? Could it be that those with a call to be apostles are not walking in more miracles, greater anointing, or signs and wonders because they lack the biblical faith to ask and to expect, why are we afraid? Could it be that those with a call to be prophets 
are tempted to divination and people pleasing due to poor training. Most purported prophets I've seen, they miss that the main job of a prophet is to remind people of covenant blessings and stipulations. Any spiritual giftings are a means to the end of reminding of the new covenant in the precious blood of Jesus. Could it be that those called to be evangelists are so entrenched by pastor-dominated wineskins that they often confuse calling people to come under the care of human shepherds with the call to leave everything and follow Jesus. Real evangelists make disciples for Jesus. Real prophets make disciples for Jesus. Real apostles make disciples for Jesus. How can we succeed? How can we expect to succeed in the Great Commission and building up God's house using only a subset of tools in God's toolbox? The good life is the land where the big grapes grow, milk and honey flow from the morning till the night, and everybody's singing to Jesus. Yeah, the good life is the land where the big grapes grow, milk and honey flow from the morning till the night, and everybody's singing to Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. La 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 la.